Have you ever wondered how rhodopsin works? Well, in the back of our eyes, in the layer of tissue known as the retina, we have two kinds of photoreceptor cells, called rods and cones. While rods help you see in dim light, cones function best in bright light. Both kinds of cells contain photoreceptors that signal the brain in response to light, but rhodopsin is the one found in rod cells. Rhodopsin is a light-sensitive G-protein coupled receptor, and in fact, it was the first tPCR to have its crystal structure determined by X-ray crystallography. When rhodopsin absorbs light, it undergoes a conformational change, triggering a signal transduction cascade. It sends a signal to the brain that gets interpreted as vision. So how exactly does rhodopsin do that? Rhodopsin is a photoreceptor composed of two parts, the chromophore 11 cis retinol and the protein opsin. Retinol is a ligand composed of a polyene chain and a beta ionone group. When rhodopsin is active, retinol is bound to opsin, but upon photoactivation, the ligand dissociates. The opsin core is made up of seven transmembrane alpha helices. It has three loops that extend into the extracellular matrix, including the N-terminus, and three loops that extend into the cytoplasm, including the C-terminus. The transmembrane region contains the most hydrophobic residues, shown in red, while the extracellular and cytoplasmic loops contain more hydrophilic residues, shown in blue. The hydrophobic core allows the protein to sit within the nonpolar membrane of rod cells. Within the transmembrane core, there is a hydrophobic binding pocket for retinol. The hydrophobic residues methionine-207, phenylalanine-208, phenylalanine-212, tryptophan-265, and tyrosine-268 stabilize the nonpolar polyene chain of the ligand. The retinol ligand is bound to the opsin core through a shift-base interaction with lysine-296. The second loop on the extracellular side of the protein is particularly important for the binding of retinol. This region folds into two beta sheets, stabilized by a disulfide bond between cysteine-110 and cysteine-187. The beta sheets serve as a lid, blocking retinol from dissociating from its binding pocket when rhodopsin is inactive. Another important feature is a salt bridge between arginine-135 and glutamate-247, which prevents G-protein from binding to inactive rhodopsin. Now that we understand the structure of rhodopsin, let's learn how it functions. Under light conditions, rhodopsin sends visual cues through a process called phototransduction. When a photon hits 11 cis retinol ligand in rhodopsin, it isomerizes into 11 trans retinol. The isomerization of retinol triggers a conformational change in the opsin protein, and through a series of intermediates, it turns into metal rhodopsin 2, the active form of rhodopsin. At this point, the shift base linkage between 11 trans retinol and the lysine residue is hydrolyzed, allowing 11 trans retinol to dissociate from the complex. The G protein active site undergoes various changes as well. Helix 6 tilts away from the transmembrane core at the cytoplasmic side due to a kink at proline 267, and this results in the widening of the binding site. Additionally, Helix 5 extends into the cytoplasmic matrix by 8 residues, increasing the binding interface. These conformational changes result in the breakage of the salt bridge between arginine-135 and glutamate-247, opening up the binding site on active rhodopsin for the G-protein transducin. Rhodopsin being a G-protein coupled receptor will bind to the alpha subunit of the G-protein transducin when photoactivated, and it is stabilized by the hydrophobic residue cysteine-140. The binding results in the conversion of GDP to GTP and the GTP-bound alpha subunit then dissociates from the beta-gamma dimer in rhodopsin to activate cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase, or PDE. PDE then hydrolyzes cyclic GMP, and this decrease in cyclic GMP causes sodium and calcium channels to close, leading to hyperpolarization of the rod cell and the subsequent release of neurotransmitters. The signal is passed through several cells before reaching the brain to be interpreted as vision. The signal also tells the brain that light is present, leading to the switch from rods to cones, a process called bleaching. This phototransduction pathway may not function properly if there are mutations in rhodopsin. One eye disease known as retinitis pigmentosa is an autosomal dominant disorder characterized by degradation of retinal cells, and this leads to difficulty seeing at night. One mutation that has been found to cause retinitis pigmentosa is the substitution of methionine or glutamate for lysine-296. These mutations affect the shift-based interaction with retinol, thus decreasing the binding affinity of the ligand to the opsin protein.
Retinitis pigmentosa has also been linked to mutations in the cysteine residues involved in the stabilization of the beta sheet lid. Without the disulfide linkage keeping the beta sheets in place, the protein mist folds and the ligand binding is hindered. Additionally, mutations substituting leucine or arginine for proline 267 have been found to affect the kink in helix 6 of active rhodopsin. Without the kink, the conformation of the G protein binding site is altered, limiting the binding of transducent and the subsequent signal transduction cascade. Lastly, mutations in cysteine 140 that lowers hydrophobicity have been found to limit the interactions between rhodopsin and the G protein. Lack of strong interactions at the site prevent proper binding, again affecting downstream signaling pathways. By studying rhodopsin and its mutants, we can learn a lot about various eye diseases and search for ways to cure or care for them.